uh, from now, if I'm not mistaken. So welcome everyone to the DHIS 200 Academy. We are very happy to start this academy with you. As we said on Friday, it's going to be a very intense and ambitious uh, program. So we are going to um, be reminding you that we have materials in one side and that we have the content on another side and you have to explore yourself uh, a lot of those materials and then come with the questions. So first thing I want to say is a small update on the agenda. Uh, we do have a new expert launch uh, that will cover the Asia region. So we will have Pamod from Sri Lanka, from his Sri Lanka, uh, working also with Ministry of Health presenting and being, a, not presenting, sorry, being able to answer your questions on Friday, the last day at 9 a.m. Uh, Oslo time. So please join that, that expert launch as well, if, uh, especially if you are in the region. This will replace the troubleshooting session and it will be updated in the agenda. We will keep on reminding you. Just a short reminder that on Friday, we have a session for you to share your, um, your project. So please get in contact with us so that we block as, a spot uh, for you. It's just 10 minutes. You don't need to prepare a presentation. We just want you all to discuss and share what are your projects uh, with the Android app. So before starting, what are we going to be doing today? Today, uh, our purpose is that at the end of the day, you do have the Android app installed. You have an idea of the menus and everything available in the app, and you can link connect it to the server that you will also have prepared. So, but for that, we are going to start with um, with a small demo that I'm going to make of the Android app. Um, that is not going in detail to many things because uh, we are going to explore in detail some functionalities during the session. So today it's more like a generic um, overview. We want you to know where are all menus. I'm going to be uh, moving soon to the app to displaying the Android app while I do the demo. But I am actually following this presentation that is available on the Android Academy platform. Um, you have more, the, all the information that I'm going to be explaining is on the presentation. I'm just not going to be displaying it, but I think it's good for you to keep it in case you need to, to do a presentation, to make a presentation yourself, or if you just want to go back and use it as documentation. So we are going to move to the Android app soon. Um, uh, well, these are the areas that we are going to cover, but again, I'm going to do it in the app and not in the demo. So let's move to our Android app. And the, the first thing is the login. In the login, what we want to show you is that um, we have tried to simplify as much as possible. One, by adding a QR reader here so that, let's see if it works with this small image. I have to make it bigger. But, but ideally, we just want your users not to need to type the the, the URL that is usually uncomfortable. We cannot do this with the user and password. And the other one that if it's available in the device is really useful is a fingerprint in case you have logged in previously. So that's the one I use now. Um, so most of you should know already what the app is doing now. And the first thing the app does is to sync your configuration, is downloading your metadata from the server based on your sharing settings uh, and based on your org units. So all the configuration in the server, you log in and it just comes directly to the, to the device. And once the configuration is synchronized, then it's going to synchronize the data. So now it's downloading the data from the programs and org units and data sets that the user um, has access to. Okay, so here we are, the home screen. What do we need to know from the home screen? Uh, in the home screen, what we are, the main purpose of this app is to simplify the user experience. So we try to keep the DHIS2 configuration transparent to the user. They are seeing a combination of uh, tracker programs, event programs, data sets, um, but uh, ideally everything feels the same and they just need to think, okay, what, what am I working on today? But the reality is that we are mixing uh, the, the, the different metadata for the HAS2, and you can know that by this little word next to the number of records. So if you see person, this is the tracked entity type name. So this is a tracker program. 
If you see events, then it's an event program. And if you see data sets, then it's an aggregate data set. Um, and what you see here are the programs uh, data and data sets that are assigned to your capture or unit and that the user has either can capture or can view um, only sharing settings. But Jaime will tell you more about that. Um, these icons and all the icons we are going to be seeing in the app uh, follow a legend that you have in the presentation. So you have it as a resource. And um, I only want to say that when, when there is no icon for the sync status means data is synced. And when there is a little i on top of the event status icon means that event can only be seen. It cannot be edited for either uh, sharing settings or because it's expired or protected for any other reason. Um, so I want to talk to you about filtering and sorting. Again, in the presentation, you have a table that will explain you which kind of filters are available for each screen. I'm going to show you now uh, all of them, but because they, they adapt to the, to, the, to the domain where we are based on what makes sense. Uh, there are two that depend on configuration, which is when we use a cat combo as an attribute for a program or a data set, and when we use the possibility to assign events to users. I'm hearing a background noise. I don't know if someone has a mute uh, or if it's my own laptop. So yeah, done. So these two will depend on configuration. The rest will depend on the screen. So where can I find this? This is here. So now we are in the home screen and you have this, uh, these filters. If we go, let's say, uh, if we go to a data set, you will see only period or unit and sync status because this data set doesn't have any cat combo. So I'm gonna go to a tracker program, which is the most complex. Then you can see all of them. Uh, you do have in the slides um, also information on how the filters work, but this is the most, uh, these are most of them. So I just want to say when you use event date, it's going to filter based on the event date. But if you use the future, because here we have present, past and future, these shortcuts, you can also choose specific dates or periods. Uh, I want to get that, yes, or periods. Any time will not apply any filter. But I just want to say, if you are in a tracker program and you choose the future, then it's not gonna use the event date. It's gonna use the due date. So it's going to help you filter your uh, scheduled events. Uh, this one is the enrollment date, which in this case is called case registration date. This is a label in the server. Uh, the org unit. So for the org unit, you can either open the um, open the hierarchy and explore the hierarchy or you can just type and search your units and add them to the filter you have the sync status enrollment status because it's a tracker program and event status if we had a possibility to assign events we will have assigned to me or if we had a cat combo as an attribute and the last thing is that you can also short so when we sort not short sort when we sort, um, what it's going to do is, in this case, this is a date. So it's going to order all my tracked entity instances based on the most uh, recent event in all the events. And it's going to show me what am I sorting by, by, based on what. Here is on the event date. If I sort based on, I don't know, um, the org unit, it's going to show me that it's, it's sorting by uh, enroll, enrolling or unit. Uh, clicking again will change the order and then clicking again will disable the sorting. And uh, sorting when it's not a date is alphabetical. And I don't wanna <laughs> spend more time on the sorting. Um, I want to show you the data sets. So how do data sets look here? Let's open one. This is a list of already reported data sets. We have the date, this data set is daily, and we have the org unit of the data set. So here, each one of these tabs are the sections on your data entry form. And then here you have the table. Um, to navigate the tabs, you can swipe, but you need to be on the tabs because if you swipe when you are on the table, then it's the form what is moving. 
Now, in this version that I'm using, which is 2.3, we cannot see two little arrows that should be here for you to adjust the width of the column. This is in 2.3.1, which is going to be released during this week. But in this one, we lost it. That was a mistake. And sorry about that. So we will see more about data sets on the data sets day, and we will explore the validation rules that I'm not uh, going to be showing now. The last thing I want to say is that here, uh, we find the details. This is in all app. We have details. Details usually is the date and the, and the org unit of the data in most cases, and the status. In this case, this data set is open. To complete it, when we say we are asked, yes, I want to complete it. Now it's complete. I could reopen now from here. Let's move to the event programs. So I open this event program. Everything is quite similar. So here we have a list. Again, event date and all unit. To create an event, I'm going to be asked by the date. Here you see the icon as well. The date and the place. The, the date is pre-populated always with today. And the org unit, uh, if the user had only one org unit, uh, it will be pre-populated pre with that org unit as well. But this demo user is assigned to the whole hierarchy. So. Now, this is my data entry form. The sections in events and programs, in programs in general, are a bit different than in data sets. Here, each one of these uh, labels or headers is one section. And I can only have one section open at a time. All across the app, when you see an information icon, means it's a description to be shown. There is a description to be shown in all objects. And of course, uh, program rules apply. I don't know if we have any here. Um, yes. Yeah, program rules apply and all program rules are supported. And Jaime will tell you more about that tomorrow. And here we have the completion percentage spinner, which will be also updating uh, based on the, um, on the fields are, are visible based on the org units. You know, we can hide and show fields and sections. So this will adjust, this will affect your, your completion spinner. And I didn't say, oh no, I want to say this. Again, the user is asked, do you want to finish or finish and complete? You know, the completion is a core um, term in the HIS2. We, we have statistics in the server based on completion, so we need to keep on adding it. And this follows the icons that I told you before. Um, let's explore a bit a tracker program now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we open a tracker program, we always open in the search screen for now. And, uh, and you will see more about how to configure this screen uh, with Jaime later today. I just want to tell you that this follows uh, whatever configuration you have in the server. The number of fields to be searched, the number of minimum fields required for searching, or the number of maximum attributes required to display. All this is going to be taken from your configuration in the server. Um, and then this is your list of uh, tracked entity instances. So what we are seeing here, uh, if this program had a picture assigned, uh, this will be the profile picture and the tracked entity instance had a picture. It will be displayed, it would be displayed here. Uh, what is the profile picture? Is the first attribute of type image marked as display in list. We will see this on day three. Uh, so if there is no picture, we will take the first letter of the first attribute. And if that attribute is empty, then the icon of the tracked entity type will be displayed. So this is the three levels. Now, uh, we always see three attributes here in the card, in the list of cards. These three attributes are, again, the first three attributes marked as displaying list in the program. You will see that later with Jaime. And if we expand the card, then we see all attributes, in this case only four, but if we had more, you will see more, uh, but they need to be marked as display in list in the configuration. So uh, last thing I want to mention here is that um, we try uh, when we are in tracker programs to, to, to handle two levels, the program level, which is the tracked entity instance enrolled in a program, but also the tracked entity level. So 
in this case, the patient level with all the activity of the patient uh, in the different health services or programs that we offer in the facility. So one step uh, to do that, one action to do that is to display here the different enrollments. So you know that this user is enrolled in two uh, different, in three programs actually, in the current one, in contact tracing, and in um, also in the port of entry program. So here you see that they have different enrollments. Um, so also aligned with that, you can change the program here. If you don't find your, your patient, you can change the program, or if you just want to work in another program, you can change it here, as long as they share the tracked entity type. This list will, will be a list of uh, programs with the same tracked entity type, which in this case is person. And you can also search across all persons registered uh, on your, in this case, on your device. And, uh, and then the attributes will be those in common for the tracked entity type and not specific for the program. Okay, let's move on and open one dashboard, the one tracked entity instance dashboard. Okay, what are we seeing here? The first thing I want to show you is the, the, the headers, the tabs in the, in the top of the, um, of the dashboard. Here we have an overview of the patient. This is what we call the tracked entity instance card. I will explain this later. Here we have the stages, the events of the stage, of the different stages for this program. The next tab, and then you can navigate the tabs, are the patient, the program indicators uh, related to this tracked entity instance. We will talk about this on Wednesday. Here we would have the relationships, if this patient had, again, following your server configuration. And here are the notes. We also have notes in the events. I didn't say it before. And, uh, and, and we can add as many as we want. We will see here when we have one. So um, in the overview, what are we seeing here? Uh, again, the first three attributes marked as display in list are here. Here we have the tracked entity instance, the tracked entity type icon. If the user had a picture, it would be, if the patient had a picture, it would be displayed here. Here we have the follow-up um, marked icon. So you can see in the list how this patient is marked for follow-up. We do this with that icon. And then the enrollment status that uh, this, in this case, is open or active. Uh, here we have the enrol enrollment date with the label assigned in the server, and here we have the enrollment uh, or unit. If we wanted, if we wanted to modify the attributes of the patient, we click on see details. First, we have the enrollment data as the details of the event, enrolling or unit, enrollment date, and then coordinates if the user, if the patient had them based on your configuration always. And then here we have the attributes. Here is where we can modify the attributes. Of the person. So I want to uh, talk to you now about this menu because it has a lot of actions. So here is where you can delete a tracked entity or an enrollment if you have permissions. Here is where you can open the patient dashboard. So here we are showing that this patient is enrolled in one program and could be enrolled in two more. If it had, if he had more enrollments, it will be here as active, and if he had historic enrollments, they will be also displayed here. And here we can open the enrollment dashboard. So if this patient had more enrollments, they would be here and I can navigate them directly from here. So this is how we elevate a bit the unit to the tracked entity instance and not to the program. The next interesting um, action here is the event timeline. So we can choose how do we display the events uh, for our dashboard. So I'm gonna change it to timeline. This is how the app displayed the events before. So here we have a list of events uh, or program stages ordered chronologically. For programs where we have repeatable stages and where we know that we are gonna end up having a lot of events registered, it might be a bit confusing to have them all listed one after the other. So in these cases, we recommend grouping events by stage. So now we have this patient has one clinical examination, three lab requests, three results. So this is just a display and whatever you choose, whatever the user chooses, it's going to be um, stored in the app for the next time. So they don't need to do it all the time. 
And then the last one is that here you can uh, change the, the status of the interview. You do it from here. Um, the last thing that I want to show you very quickly, because I'm a bit out of time, are the maps. We will see maps, uh, I think, again on Wednesday, but uh, there are two places where we can see maps um, in, um, in the app. At program level, so I open the program, and if the program is configured for having enrolling or the enrollment, uh, sorry, coordinates, either at enrollment or track entity instance or event, I will be offered uh, this. Okay. So, uh, oops. So here we will be seeing the uh, coordinates of the track entity instances, yes. And then you can navigate them. So the one where you are in is a bit bigger. And then it will, so you can either navigate with the icons or with the cards here. Some of them don't have coordinates and you can open from here. And the other place where we have, um, do, 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 contact, where we have maps is inside the tracked entity instance in the relationship. So this uh, person has three relationships and I can display them in the map or in the list. Mm, I'm going to stop here. You do have a, let me stop sharing as well. You do have the presentation available in uh, in the in the in the academy platform. And uh, and please, if you have questions, if you want more uh, detailed demos, many things we will see uh, during this week. But if you want more things or you have questions, please stay today. Uh, one hour after the session or come tomorrow one hour before and then we can make the demo again or, or answer your questions and please uh, I should have reminded before that the question should go to the slack channels that we have and not to the chat here in zoom and um, this is all for me uh, right now sorry for the <laughs> like the super condensed uh, content I guess this is how we have to do it so that now you can have a small break. I'm sorry I took uh, some minutes from your break. So I'm going to stop here and see you. I need to check the agenda. Yes. So yeah. uh, everybody, please be back in three minutes. We're five minutes late because we, we can you sorry give me yes. No, it's okay. We, we allow five minutes uh, in the morning. Please, everybody be on time. Um, and also, don't worry about the, the account in the server. You have been asking me everywhere. Please be patient. You're going to receive these instructions during the day, so do not worry. Um, we'll see you in three minutes. Uh, we'll start with the next session, which is the intro to the metadata. Please be here at 10.30 for those who are following Oslo time in three minutes for the rest of the world, because I cannot go through the whole time zones. Thank you. Can I add something? Sorry. Um, yes, I but we're questions. using the break, so maybe Jaime, we can give him two minutes. <laughs> but yes, Alice. Too. Yes, don't forget to mark your attendance. As mentioned, uh, Friday, it counts as 10% of the final grade. So I have posted uh, the link to the attendance form on the online platform in the chat. So please, please, please don't forget to mark your attendance. This is, this is mandatory every day, every single day. This is the first thing to do. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Um, hello, welcome back, everybody. We are going to start the first session of today after the demo. It's uh, going to last 20 minutes from 10.30 now to 10.50. Sorry about that. Uh, we have here Rebecca, who's going to be presenting the first part. Um, she works as well for the University of Oslo, and she has been leading the WHO DHIS2 implementation packages. So thank you very much, Rebecca, for being here. Um, the floor or the camera is yours. Thanks, Jaime. Are you going to share your screen, or you want me to do mine? Uh, I have given you rights, but as you want, if you wanna, if you want me to do it. If you could do it, that'd be fine, because then you can take right. over. Yeah, I'll take, I'll take care of that. Give me a second. Um, but I can say good morning, and thank you guys for letting me say hello for a few minutes. Um, it's nice to see a lot of uh, familiar names in in the group here. Um, and I will just say, I think, you know, the Android product has has enormous potential for um, supporting the COVID-19 surveillance use cases. Um, so I will just So I will just share a little bit, um, an introduction to the metadata that's also going to be your reference metadata for this, um, for this workshop this week. So in case you haven't noticed, um, there is, uh, there's a pandemic going on. So COVID was um, first identified in, in Wuhan, China. And since then, um, we've seen local transmission reported in more than 200 countries and territories across all six WHO regions. Um, so it's quite interesting to have such a common use case across so many countries at the same time. Um, interesting, but unfortunate. And as of recently, the WHO has, um, has been reporting more than 50 million confirmed cases and 1.2 million COVID-19 deaths across the world. Unfortunately, it looks like there is yet no end in sight. So at the University of Oslo, we've had an approach with the World Health Organization for several years now, where we develop um, digital health data toolkits. So basically using DHIS2 as a platform to help disseminate um, best practices, standardized metadata, through DHIS2 as a platform and enable countries to, to adopt that metadata and then go ahead and do those kinds of customizations and adaptations that they need for their own local workflows. So in the case of COVID-19, we uh, followed the WHO's technical guidance, the technical interim guidance that was um, initially updated in February and we continued to update pretty rapidly for the first maybe two months or so as the guidance was evolving. Um, so this package, it mainly supports uh, case detection, situation reporting, active surveillance, uh, contact tracing, and response. And I'm sure many of you might be familiar with some of this metadata um, because at least for the countries that we are in contact with, we know that DHIS2 is being used for COVID-19 surveillance in 13, 36 countries around the world. Many of those countries have taken the, the standard metadata as, as kind of a starting point, and many have turned around and, and done some incredible innovations uh, using that starting point. Next slide. So I'll just give you a little bit of an overview of um, what this includes. So we developed this toolkit, this set of uh, metadata packages. So they are installable JSON files. Um, we developed the configuration in, in sort of a global integrated dev instance. And then we package them up and produce them on GitHub. There's a lot of documentation that I'm sure that's going to be shared. Um, but we made this in a modular way so that countries can take what they need and then apply it in their own contexts. So the daily reporting is um, it's an aggregate reporting um, and it's really quite standardized and also facilitates WHO's uh, requested standard reporting, not only up to countries at national level, but then onwards to regional and WHO global levels. Um, this was actually able to be implemented quite quickly um, by countries who already had an existing aggregate HMIS and just adding some different data points. Um, we have an outbreak line listing, so this is an event model. Um, this is generally optimized for when you want to get more granular detail of your cases, but uh, maybe your cases are growing so fast that the case-based data entry is just not possible. So it's a little bit of an in-between model. There's the port of entry screening and follow-up which was uh, widely adopted, really interesting use case. Um, so basically being able to register suspected cases and travelers at points of entry, and then be able to follow them up over time and enroll them into the case-based program if they um, 
end up being a confirmed case. And I believe the two programs that mostly you'll be focusing on is this uh, contact tracing and case-based surveillance. So there is a relationship built between those. Um, the, the primary workflow here is um, being able to, to register suspected COVID cases, um, track them through their laboratory diagnosis um, and through to the health outcome. But of course, when you're registering these suspected cases or when you're able to update that case with a, a confirmed laboratory result, it launches a whole work process around registering contacts and being able to link those contacts with the index case and then be able to follow them up over time as well. So um, that's my brief introduction. Um, I hope that this metadata is, is useful for um, this academy this week. And I think, again, there's, there's a huge role for Android to play, particularly in getting this granular level detail, um, being able to decentralize the case reporting, get more real-time reporting, and be able to add this key geography component that's often difficult to do with case-based systems. Um, and that's it for me, over, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Rebecca. Uh, I don't know if I'm being able, uh, can you hear me? Because I have too many screens, so I don't know. We hear you. Yes, we can hear ah, okay. you. Okay. So thank you very much, Rebecca. Um, thanks for the introduction. So as she has been explaining, we are going to be working with these packages. And we are going to focus, as she said, in the last two ones. So she has explained this quite well already, but yes, for you to know, mainly we will be talking and using the last one during the training. And we believe it contains all the important information that we would like to show you and that you can take really big advantage using Android devices. And the ones that are marked with a dash or dot line, which is the contact tracing and the aggregate are gonna be support programs that we will, always, we will also be using, but in a, in a smaller way. It's important to know that these packages have been adapted slightly to our um, needs for the academy. So it's not 100% accurate to what would, you, what would you find in the real environment, but we are explaining what are the differences and how we, we have implemented them. So she already went through this. She explained the five of them. So no need to go again. But basically, this is the workflow, and this is one of the things we will ask you to look when you log in in your server. Again, do not worry about this. You're going to be giving credentials today. You will be able to see from one side the server side, and on the other side, you will be able to see the Android. So the idea is that you check how this workflow you see here has been implemented and adapted to the DHIS2 data model. So in this case, we're talking about tracking. You will see there are several program stages that we call phases here. And you will be able to go through it and see what, uh, how accurate or not it is. So in the design, as I'm saying, you will find stages. This one is the first one, which is the stage. And once you log in in the, in the server side, you will be able to see that these are the attributes that we have decided or that were decided to be included. Um, I'm not going to go through them. They're pretty much self-explanatory. But what we're going to be asking you during the exercise this week is to modify them, see what you want to put in your program, what you want to be capturing with your Android device, because the idea is that you get familiar with the, with the program and you accommodate it to your needs. The packages contain absolutely everything and then it's up to you to customize them. So this is kind of the exercise we'll be doing during, during the week. So at this uh, stage, the enrollment, you feel free afterwards to modify. You will see that things are, have been included. You will see in the support document. Then we have four stages. The first one is going to be the clinical examination exposures, um, where you will be checking, well, taking the, um, the clinical symptoms and exposures, which include this list here. So this is something that is collected in the first phase, and you will see that in the Android, it goes after the, the enrollment. Then you can have a second stage, which is repeatable, and is when you request the, the laboratory results. Uh, it's explained here. You will see afterwards 
and in the support document, what is included in each, all the data elements that have been included, then the lab results, and lastly, the health outcome. So if we take all this uh, and we map it exactly to the DHIS2, this is kind of, kind of what you're gonna be seeing. And we try to make it this as less abstract as we could, but what we did is we took the, the recommendations from the WHO with this previous uh, workflow was uh, presented or prepared, and then we adapted that to the DHIS2 data model. So here, if you see bottom right corner, you see kind of the legend, and you see we have two programs, there are more, but we're gonna be focusing on these two, and especially the one that is big here, the case-based surveillance, and you see the stages with the different data elements that have been, are being collected uh, on the ROM and the attributes, et cetera. And you will see here, there is a link between one program or the other one, which is in terms of contacts, because when we are tracking people for COVID, we need to know who has been in contact with whom. So we can relate. This is done to the relationships that we will also see in the session on Thursday, if I'm not mistaken, or Thursday, Thursday, Wednesday, sorry. Uh, we'll see. And here, down here, you're gonna have the, um, the link, oh, sorry. Opa. Okay, yeah, yeah there you have the, the support document that you can check and you can deeply go through the program with the data elements, uh, through the different stages, et cetera. The slides have been uploaded and they will be uploaded every day to the Academy site. So feel free to go there and take whatever you need. Lastly, because we do not have much time, we have also gathered here some other resources that you could check during this week or after the sessions are over in case you can, you can or you have the time to go through. You can read everything about the COVID and the DHIS2 packages in this first link. And we have also included here the YouTube channel where you can see many videos that uh, explain this quite well. I think that's all. Um, I think we are on time. Uh, let me, uh, sorry. I mean, I maybe you want to <clears throat> stress or, or tell them where to find the metadata navigation file that you have done in the slide, the sentence. So the, the one for the academy, the modified one. Yeah. You see my screen, eh? Yeah. In your last slide, yeah, you have to check also metadata navigation file. Yes, uh, in the academy side, sorry, it's, um, oof, let me check because I have, well, Zoom is blocking my, my tab. to the course. That's all right. So here, this is what you all should be seeing. seeing sorry. Uh, you have been asking all of you how to join. Now you're there on Zoom, but basically here you're gonna be seeing all your days. Things for the last or for the for other days have not been uploaded yet. But if you go here, this is the attendance that uh, Alice is reminding you to please fill in every day. But if you go here, okay. it's here, no? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's the resource metadata navigation file in session two. Here, sorry. So if you go here, you will be having access to this document that you can download and where everything is explained. Uh, it, it contains the modifications, right? Martin, this one? Yeah. This is the the this this is the, the updated one for the little changes we are making to the default WHO pack well or default COVID package. Uh, just for the for for some demos, etc. 
like to make the most of the Android app and to make the exercises. So this is a modified one. This is not the official one. It's for this academy. Thanks. So uh, I don't know if you can print it, but well, at least have it download it because you will be making reference to it quite often uh, during the whole week. And again, during the next session, we're going to be. Let me check. I cannot hide this. We are back at. Uh, is that what you mean? We are back at 11. Yeah, I wanted to, to project the agenda and explain what we're going to be doing in the next session. But basically, in the next session, we are going to ask you to go. We will give you the account so you can finally connect to the server. Um, and you will be able to go through this metadata in the server side. And we will ask you to compare or try to play a little bit. But wait for it. We are going to be back in five minutes. I think, no, it's five or 10 minutes break. Uh, let me tell the agenda. So they closed it. I think it's 10 minutes break now, but let me confirm. Yeah, there uh, you are. That's not, the time is not to. This is correct. We're back at 11. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you back at 11. We're gonna start playing with the server. So have a coffee or a tea, whatever you drink. Um, be back in five minutes, please. Thank you very much.
Hello, welcome back, everybody. I hope you're all there. I hear nothing, but I'm gonna hope you are. I am gonna start with the next session. Uh, let's see how it is. Presenter view. All right, so this session is about preparing your metadata. We are gonna take what we have been seeing in the previous session about the COVID packages in the DHIS2 implementation. And we are gonna see how they are set in the server and you will be able to log in and test, check, do some modifications and feel free to adapt the, the program according to your needs. So this session is gonna take 90 minutes. And by the end of the session, you should be able to log in in the server. I know you are all asking us through different channels in Slack, in the private messages. You will be given access now, so do not worry. Uh, in case you have issues, we will be there to support you, but we'll be sharing a um, spreadsheet where you will have your username and password. You will actually gonna be given two users one for modifying the server and one that you are supposed to use in the Android. We will explain why you should not be using both in, so you should not use the admin one in the in the phone, don't worry, we'll check. And as you know, this academy, we're gonna be asking you to provide the results of your exercises. This one does not contain any deliverables, but we will ask you to be careful while performing it as for all the questions you might have because whatever you do here it's going to impact on the rest of the exercises through the week so feel free to ask as much as you need so you can achieve the perfect or the program according to to your needs so um i guess you don't have yet the access to the server we're going to give it to you you all Please listen now, and when we give you the credentials, please wait till you have seen all the slides and, and ask the questions afterwards. Don't worry, you're gonna, we're gonna give you time. You have until the end of the session to play with the server. So don't worry, you are gonna have the time. So accessing the server, this is the link that you have been trying to access already and you have been assigned your admin, an admin user, again, and a mobile user. One of the things you will notice is that you all have the same administrative password. We know this is not the right thing to do. So one of the first things we're gonna ask you is to change, modify your password. Please do it. So through the whole academy, we're gonna try, and, we're gonna try to implement the best practices in terms of security. And this is one of the first things you should do. Whenever they give you a password that has been generated by another person, like us in this case, please connect and modify. You should do this for both, for the admin and from the, for the mobile user. So in order to change the password, we're gonna, I mean, we have here the slides. Most of you probably will know, but this is the way to modify the password. This is to modify the password or the account you are using in case you are an administrator, you can modify the password of the mobile user through the user's application. And this is what we're asking you to do in the exercise. In order to explore the program, uh, probably you know already, but you should go to the maintenance application. And there you're gonna have a huge list of programs. Please know that we have created 120 different users with 120 different programs. Please do only modify the one it corresponds to your name or to your username. So if you're, for example, the admin 015, 
your program is the 015. Do not modify other ones. There's no way we can block the access to other ones. Um, or it, it would have entitled too much work from that side. So please be honest and do only modify the program you have been assigned. So when you reach the program, feel free to go through all the stages, see how it has been set up and modify it as you want. So one of the things that um, we usually mention in the demo, but now we're a bit short on time, you will see that in the um, attributes that are displayed in the main screen in Android, there is a list that says display, um, mandatory, and searchable. Whatever you put here is going to reflect in Android. And Android um, has a limitation of showing 3 plus 1 um, in the dashboard. You will see this afterwards when you log in. Uh, we, we include the plus 1 because in case there is an image, that image is put. But if you would have four attributes at display, uh, only the first three ones will be, will be shown. In terms of searchable, it's the ones that are going to be shown, like here you see on the right uh, part of my slide. Those are the things you will be able to search. And one of the main questions, or one of the big questions we get in Android, is that I cannot enter a TEI unless I perform a search. That is true from the Android perspective, and we'll see a bit later on. Um, OK, sorry. I'm going to make it bigger. Thanks, Marta. Um, so what I was saying is here on the right side, you have the search box. And as put here in bold, Android imposes search before entering. This is because of how Android works in terms of offline mode. We're going to explain a bit later what is the reasoning behind it. But it is true. In Android, you are not going to be able to insert a TEI unless you perform a search first. OK? And then also on the program, you can see that on the attributes, you can specify the render type. This is going to be covered in the sessions of tomorrow. And uh, Marta will go through them. So don't worry. Uh, feel free to play if you want now, but the explanations will come next uh, sessions. So one of the user recommendations we give you is that, and this is not a specific to Android, but whenever you are assigned an organization unit, like we have done for this training, so your mobile user has been assigned an organization unit in the paper, you're going to have to do this as an exercise. We ask you to assign only this organization unit to the user. Another really common mistake in Android implementations is that you assign the whole organization unit tree. So in this case, we're going to be working with our Sierra Leone database. And common mistake, you check whole Sierra Leone. This has a really big impact in terms of performance for Android, because Android, because of the nature that I was mentioning of offline and that we will cover on the fourth day, Android is going to try to load as much information as it could need for operating offline. And this means that if you assign the user the whole organization tree, it's going to download absolutely everything from the whole organization tree, which is going to consume a lot of bandwidth, and it's going to make your phone or your device much slower. So one of the reasons we, are, we ask you to do this is to reduce. And if this Android-specific user is going to be only entering or checking information from one organization unit, you should assign only this. OK, uh, a bit more technical, but for you to know that by default, the data that is being downloaded is 500 TIs and 1,000 events per uh, organization unit assigned. Again, this is not only specific for Android, but it's an Android Academy. So we're going to ask you to do it for the exercise. But please have it in mind that it is something you should do always. So if your user is going to be only operating in a specific facility, do not give that user more rights. We're going to cover a little bit of this in the security session. So for the mobile setup, what we're going to ask you is to change the password. For this, you could either log in with the mobile user in the web, uh, so to the server, or you can use the user app from the administrator account. The role has already been created. 
and assign. We're not going to explain this, but for you to know that your administrator user has been given a role of super user, so can perform all the changes in the system. Um, and your mobile user has been given the role of tra facility tracker. This is the replication of the play servers. So in case you could be curious about what the roles are, you could go to the server and check them. Uh, the play server, I mean, the demo servers. Um, but we have received here the roles, so you do not mess with them. And it does not cause problems that could lead to, to bigger problems while doing the training. So what you will need to do is log in. And you will need to assign the organization unit that we are going to show you in the spreadsheet uh, to your mobile user. And for the search, probably you want this user to be able to search through the whole country because one exercise we will do for maps. So do this. I'm putting some slides at the at the end that support this on, and can help you do this. Uh, another thing you should check is that the program that has been assigned to you the um, COVID-015 or whatever is the user that you have been assigned, it has no rights. So at the moment, if you could log in with your phone, you will not be able to see. So another task you have is to assign to that program, the user group that is COVID-19 data capture. The user groups are already there. So you do not, do not need to do it to create any user group. Although if you wanted, you could specify your specific user and you could give access only to your specific uh, user. So this is what I have just explained. Feel free to do it like this, or in case you wanna do it through the specific user, like we did, for example, for Jaime and for Marta, you could do it as well. So, uh, it's not 15 minutes, we're going to give you more time. So, we're going to share now a link in the Zoom channel or in Slack. I have to check with Alice and with Marta and Jose, how are we going to share with you? But in this link, you're going to see your user, so your Android user, your admin user, and the organization unit. So these are the tasks that you should do, and we're going to be available. I think you cannot write on the Zoom chat. So we're going to be available on Slack for your questions, and we will be able to support you with your problems. So let me share that link. So I may think you can share it in Android implementers in the Slack channel. And, and I think I, we would like to request you all that once you log in to the server with your user, please mark a reaction to the link, like a thumbs up or something, so that we have a, an overview more or less of how, if all of you have been able to, to register uh, to the server. I will add the first thumbs up so that you just only have to click there once your user has logged in successfully. And, uh, and please use that channel also for questions. Now uh, either both uh, the three of us, Jaime, Jose, and myself are monitoring the channel for for, for for answering your questions. So there we there we go. Jaime just posted the, the the channel and I'm going to add a reaction. So please add a thumbs up when you log into the server with your user. And good luck with this first exercise. Okay, I have just seen some people that joined the session now. I don't know if they drop and they reconnect it. If that's the case, sorry to repeat it, but I'm gonna say, what are we going to do now for those that just arrived? We are in the session um, two or three, if we count the demo. I'm and in I'm this session- to, um, I'm going to share my screen with the exercise in full screen so that- uh, Okay, perfect, yeah, I can, okay. So for those that just arrived, 
please note that we are in the exercise prepare your metadata and users. And here you are supposed to configure the server according to your needs. We have shared a link in Slack where you can uh, find your credentials for a server. And so far we have only got one reaction from Marta. So can you please all confirm? Okay, now I see some more, perfect. So please go to the Slack channel Android Implementers Digital Academy. I have just posted a link that links contains the users and passwords for you to access the server. I the think you all know this. Seven people, eight people. Good, good. Please keep logging in. Sorry, Alice. The link, the link is also available in the chat on Zoom. OK. Great. So I guess you know it already, but I'm going to put there the, um, the link. 11. This was shared before, but in Last case. One, 12. You cannot find it. So we are displaying in the screen what you are supposed to be doing right now, which is in the user app, everything happens on the server now. Make sure you change the password. You assign the role to your mobile user. You assign the unit to your mobile user. You verify the search or units. You add yourself to the user group, COVID data capture your user, sorry, the, the mobile. All this is about the mobile user. You are configuring your mobile user. And then you go to the program and assign it to the user group. Yes, your specific program. We have 12 people. Okay, but we have 80 participants. So I hope the other 68 are just forgetting to click 16. Okay, and growing. Yes. Good, good, good. So some people are asking, uh, okay. where is the user uh, credentials? Uh, in So in Slack, please I'm note that there is one yeah. channel called Android Implementation Implementers Digital Academy. There is a, I don't know if we can, can we pin it or something? Uh, yeah, we should. Pinterest, okay. Yeah, I have pinned it. So you should see now. Twenty. Uh, Google Doc is a spreadsheet work which contains your user, the organization unit. Uh, so I mean, sorry, the person, the organization unit, and your two users accounts you have been assigned. So far, we have twenty people that have liked or have give a thumb, a thumbs up. Okay, that's two, that's two. Yeah, thank you very much. Missing. So and, just yeah. to give us some feedback because I cannot find my username. Okay. Um, Mafende, okay. Mm, that's true. Let's. Okay, which which account, which email did you use for registering? Maybe we can ask. Eric, okay. Okay, uh, please those that cannot find their username, my you okay. Um, we're gonna be checking those. Eric Abbas, okay, you can you can share the thumbs up in the chat, uh, but you can also just click uh, where we share the link as a reaction, and then we can keep the we can centralize the following up there. Adolf cannot find Abbas cannot find so Jaime the ones not finding the username. Yes, uh, those that cannot find, I'm gonna we're gonna add you because we have a spare list of ten. Um, but let me check something. So Marta, yeah, I can see your screen. We can add them there. I'm just gonna yeah, yeah. check uh, one second something.
Um, just one thing, those who are having issues, oh, sorry, someone else joining, those who are having issues accessing, I guess you registered with an email, right? Can you share um, the email in private with either Marta, Alice or me, so we can try to find you on the list we have? Meanwhile, I'm, I'm trying to find some uh, that, uh... Within the application, I can't see. Um, Deepika, I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, you should be logging into the DHIS2 server. Can you explain us a bit? To Yes, uh, you have to be logging into the server with the admin user and then configuring your mobile user. No worries, we are going to get you all in one by one. Jaime, are you dealing with... Um... What's, uh, yes, I'm trying to check if those who have written to me in private. Okay. I'm checking the, the accounts. We're going to provide you with uh, specific accounts. So you can work on the exercise and we will sort it out after, afterwards what the issue might be with uh, accessing order registration. So we have uh, someone saying, Tommy Laio, Akin Mola, uh, login page is showing invalid login information. Is this on the server? Please make sure the capital letter, the exclamation mark, and the end of the password. Yes, on the server, so you cannot log in. Okay. Uh, those who are asking, I have also put a link in the Google, in the Slack channel. Okay, uh, let's do one thing just to, because I, I, I've tried and we can, I can connect. So those of you who have issues, because we're receiving too many messages <laughs> through several channels, um, just to track a bit, if you successfully log in, has successfully logged in the server, uh, please write a check on the link we have put there. Sometimes, I mean, a lot of people give 26 thumbs up, even though we're 80 participants here. So we don't know what's happening with uh, the 54 that are missing. Uh, sorry, I'm being <laughs> uh, bombed with messages. 
Um, those who are having issues, let us know. Mm, but it's it's getting a bit difficult to track, so we're gonna try to go one through one through everyone from up to bottom. But please be a bit patient. Okay, hello again. So some people are uh, keep asking. Um, uh, so the exercise, the goal of the exercise is first to log in, and then please check what Marta is sharing on her screen, what you have to do in the user application and in your specific program. Um, what you need to do is to set the program according to your needs. And this is something that you can do freely you should check and download the resources that uh, we have shared with you and you can find in the academy site and there for example decide if you decide that you do not want to take the age of your patients because for whatever reason or you don't want to get gather the sex whatever you want this is something you can change in your program so you modify according to your needs and we will see how this represents afterwards in the Android. The same in terms of marking which things or which attributes you want to display in the TEI dashboard that you will see later on. But for example, you say, OK, when I search for a, for a patient, I want to search by name and by sex or I want to search by the age and the age, all these things are the ones that you are supposed to set up according to your desire and then we will 
have different kind of configurations for each participant, for each of the participants. Um, wait, I can't see now. Um, for for those participants which who has an account bigger than 120, so from 21 to 28, you might be having problems to log in. We are working on that and creating your uh, well, validating or recreating your 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 credentials for those that have from a number 120 over. So 21, 120, 122, until 127. Please wait a minute. We will let you know once uh, your accounts are ready. Sorry about that. So I'm also seeing that some people might already try their login in the device. I mean, feel free to, to use it if you want, but the idea is this is covered in the next session. So don't worry. Uh, I mean, if you wanna go ahead, go ahead. But um, this is something you will do in the next session. Make sure though you change the password of, your, of both of your users and that you perform first what we're asking you in the slide that Marta is showing. So make sure you can access and you can see your program, that the program has been assigned to the mobile user either via, well, either through the um, uh, user groups or specifically through the user, and that your user has been assigned to a specific organization unit in terms of capturing and in terms of search, you have enabled the whole Sierra Leone. I, I don't know if Marta has said because uh, seriously, I'm being a bit <laughs> receiving too many notifications. It seems that uh, those who had above 120, you could not access. We are fixing it right now. So in five minutes, you will be able, we will let you know through here. We are also getting some questions about um, where do we find the org unit capture and maintenance? Um, sorry, um, we, we assume, as we said, that um, you know DHIS2. Um, uh, so these configurations we are talking about are in the user app. In the user app, uh, you, you, you select your user and then you can modify the role, you can modify the org units, et cetera. But sorry if we don't uh, if we don't have time to go in detail on how to do these things on DHIS two. Uh, but, uh, some another thing because some people are raising this concern. Um, Abbas, sorry, uh, please can you write um, your email so either to Marta or me or Jose through Slack in private message and we will take care of that, we will add you to the list. So please note that in the list we are sharing, you should make, I mean, imagine for example, I'm gonna take the example of, um, I'm going to line 19. So this is Ivan Tejet. Ivan Tejet, you should forget about that he is in row 19, his user is AC admin 027. This means his program is the 027. So, because some people ask me, hey, but what if some people take me because I'm 19? No, you are not a student 19 in this case for Ivan. Ivan in this is, is assigned the 27. Okay, I hope it's clear. So please modify only your program that corresponds to your username, not to the role in the spreadsheet. Thank you. We have a question also, should our individual program remain assigned to all facilities? No, uh, your individual program should be assigned only to the org unit that we have identified for you in the file. So I'm going to display the file now for a moment uh, in the screen. So here 
we have uh, your org unit. So your program should only be assigned to your org unit. Your specific program with your uh, number should only be assigned to your org unit. So in this case, would be Panderu, but uh, this changes between users. Hope is fine. I think we have replied to all those that were having issues. In case you have not been replied, please uh, excuse us because there are too many messages, but please write either to Marta, Jose, or me, or in the channel, and we will take care of you so you have access to the server. And you are added to the line as a line, as a new line in the in the Excel sheet. Jaime, mean, we had some comments on uh, no permission to manage object uh, messages. Have you checked those? I have not, but uh, please, in case you are having that issue, make sure you are logging with the admin user. Yeah. yeah, and not with the mobile. So the admin we use for the server. See, we have one now from Barnabas. I can't assign the program to the COVID data capture group. The program, you should, you should assign the user, the user, your mobile user to the data capture user group. Marta, maybe you wanna go back to two or three mm -hmm. slides where the example is shown. And the program to the user group. Okay, so this is what you cannot do. Uh, I can see user 50. Or oh, maybe you need to, there are pages. You can, you can, uh, you see these little arrows here? You need, you can navigate. Ah, but you're right. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jose, we may want to have a look at this, but the users are there. Just search. If you share with the number, you may not see your user in the list. We are going to have a look at that because from page two, we only see one user. Yes, 
but you can search by the number and then your users will come. I hope that's fine. Uh, Milton, so the ones having problems with the um, permissions to manage object, make sure you log in with your admin user and not with the mobile user. Please make sure you log in with the admin user, AC admin, to the server. Okay, so users, users uh, 121 to 128, you should be able to log in now. Please try. In your specific program, assign the program to the user group. Is 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 uh, you have to do the same for your user and for your program. Assign the program to the user group. So you, you do this from great uh, Tommy Lyle. great. Um, so yeah, Kagame, in your specific program, assign the program. So it's it's this. But we do this in the program. So let's open this one. Um, sure. We do it here. Also to add, in case someone is having a specific issue because you modify by mistake the public access and you get locked out of your program, please contact uh, Jose Mart or me and we will fix it. Okay. I mean, this is a common thing that happens sometimes, so don't worry. Just let us know so, so we can take care of it. Hi, uh, we had Patrick joining today and uh, he is not in the list. He just uh, wrote it in the. Yes, Patrick, Thank please. You, Patrick. Uh, yeah. 
send either to me or Marta your email account and we're gonna add it to the spreadsheet so you will be added to the to the last row um, apologies for sharing that with everyone uh, we should not do this the email we have removed it from the list but at the moment uh, we will add you to the spreadsheet and later on we will sort it out with the with the other stuff like accessing the site and everything so please send, send us the, the email and we will add you to the spreadsheet. I'm sorry I'm talking like this, but every time I talk, I have the ping, 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 ping notifications. <laughs> it's a bit difficult to follow. User login. Okay, what's your... So you are probably, uh, Tommy Lario, you are probably, are you logging in with the admin and you cannot see the user? That's a bit strange. Did you change your password? Let me check. Mm. Okay. Um, one twenty three. Uh, Jose, the, the users over hundred twenty. They don't have access to. Yeah, yeah I know. I just figured that out. Uh, sorry, it's, it will be ready in one minute. Yes, and they have they are called mobile instead of admin, so that is confusing yeah, yeah, yeah. a bit. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Yes. Okay, we're gonna fix that. The, the wrong one. Sorry. Okay, Patrick, sorry, I just saw your email here. We are getting problems on how to add, uh, sorry, questions on how to add a program, uh, two of them. What, what do you mean with how to add a program? If it's a program to be displayed in the app, what you have to do is what Jaime explained. It has to be assigned to the org unit of the user. It has to be shared for capturing or viewing data. If it's about how to add a program in DHIS2, uh, that is supposed to be covered in the events program or the tracker program that you are supposed to, to know already when joining this academy. Uh, if we uh, have time for troubleshooting without any questions about Android, we could try to give you a few details on how to add a program in DHIS2, but we cannot prioritize that kind of training, which is a level one academy uh, while being in a level two that uh, we assume that you have that knowledge. So please specify what, what you mean with the question and yeah.
How do we get uh, the Android is asking, app? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the Android app, don't worry, it's going to be covered in the next session. So next session is going to be how to install either, even though this, you could have done it already, so it's okay, but don't worry, in the next session, we're going to see how to download the application, how to put in your device, and how to connect to the server with the mobile account that you have been given. So at this moment, the important thing is that you make sure that your mobile user has been changed the password via the admin user and has been assigned the program via the sharing settings. Okay, so as Marta was putting the last slide, please make sure you assign the program to your organization unit. That you take the mobile user and you add it to the program, you share with the with the user either via the user groups or via direct putting the username AC Mobile 027. In the next session, we will see how the modifications you have made at the server level are reflected in your Android. So for example, and I repeat again, sorry, but um, the question is coming several times. If you have enabled that only two fields are searchable, you will see how in your Android, you need to put those two fields, well, one of the two fields to perform the search to be able to insert afterwards a TI. If you do not want to collect the age of the patient because in your implementation it is not re uh, required, feel free to remove it. So these are the things that we want you to modify and then you check on the Android how, it, how it, uh, it's reflected. Um, don't worry, you're not gonna lose the access to the server. Actually, you're gonna be uh, working a lot with the server and with the mobile. And the idea is that the changes you make will be reflected in Android. We're gonna explain that afterwards. But it does not mean that what you change now, it's forever. Change something now, we will see afterwards. And if later on or do, during this afternoon, evening, uh, whenever you want, you can log in in the server, make a modification and see how it reflects in the Android. Okay, so I'm getting a question uh, about the searchable and display. So um, if you go to the uh, slide, Marta, can you go to the slide seven, please? So here, it's a very quick thing. We will explain a little bit more of this, but for those asking that question, you will see that in your program, in the attributes list, you have several columns. One of them is the display list. Uh, whatever you display here, it's going to be shown in the dashboard afterwards. Excuse me. So what it's interesting now that, for example, you select two, three, four, five, and you will see that Android, I'll explain there, has a limit of three plus one. This is because we have a limited size of the screen. So only the first three ones will be shown. In case there is a picture, that this you will see afterwards, don't worry. You will see that the picture is displayed and then the first three display in list attributes. So if you put, for example, four, the first four ones, you will see that the fourth is not shown in Android. This we will check in the next session. Eh? In terms of searchable, whatever you check searchable, no limit here, you will see that your Android device looks very different because there you see on the right side of the slides of Marta, there is a big blue, I mean, that blue screen or that blue form, it contains all the attributes that have been marked as searchable. So if you would only put one, your search form is gonna be really small. It will only contain one. And again, this, we are simulating that depending on your implementation of COVID-19, you decide that you only wanna search one thing, two things, whatever you want. So play a little bit with this. And in the next session, we will see how it affects your phone, how it's reflected. And then you can always go back to the server and change to make more changes and see how it looks like.
Yes, server seems a bit uh, busy. We have a comment in the channel. We are going to be improving that during the break. Um, I, I'm, I'm getting another question saying how to share, I guess, the program. So if you have the slides downloaded, there, there is a little hope. But basically, what you need to do is you need to make sure you go to the program you have been assigned. I'm going to put the example of 27. I'm sorry, I think that's uh, Ivan. I'm going to, it's stuck in my brain now. So it's going to be always example with 27. So if you have been assigned the user 27, you're going to have a program which is called uh, 27 something. You need to go to that program and in the sharing settings, make sure that that program is visible and editable according to what it's shown in the, Marta, can you go to slide 10, please? Ten. Yeah, so this is what you need to do. You need to find your program and then share like it is here. So metadata can view only and can capture and view data. Again, here we're doing it with the user group. If you see COVID-19 data capture, it's a group. You could also, if you want, do it specifically by the user. This is something we're gonna cover later on in the security session. But if you could prefer to say, okay, I don't want the whole group to have access. I only want my user, which is the 27. I would put here AC mobile 27. And on the right side, I will put the can view only and can capture and view. Like this, we are allowing our user or the group of users to be able to capture data in the program. If you do not put this, the program will be visible probably on the phone in case it's can view only, but will not be able to insert, to insert data. We are having problems with the, well, not problems, uh, but we are overloading the server by doing all of us the same at the same time. So we are going to, so you might all be getting this kind of message after a long loading. So we are going to, for now, restart it, but uh, we are looking at increasing the memory. We were, we were planning to wait for the break, but we might do it now if you are all blocked. Don't know Jaime or Jose, if we can discuss live here. <laughs> um, this has become, so yes, we are, we are, in, yes, thank you very much. Yes, guys, we're aware of this. We are we are improving the memory of the server. Um, Please do that now. Yes, okay. <laughs> we can do it now. Finally down. Well, it's been a success. Yes. Academy. We already have we have already seventy six participants. <laughs> there so... is one question. Yeah, we have yeah seventy six. There is one question. I could not find specific program. We cannot uh, help you find it now, but um, it must be there. I'm quite sure it's there for number 62. So it should be, if you go to maintenance, where is the slide for programs? Highland. Maintenance and then programs. Yeah. You can see it in the slide. Yeah, this one. But now we cannot, uh, we have to wait until the server is back. I am, Sorry. The, I am restarting the Tomcat, uh, but then I think it's better during the break session if we are already upgrade the memory SD. Okay, but for now I am restarting the Tomcat, so it should be yeah, up but, and okay. in 30 okay. seconds. <laughs> yes, Sergio. Uh, let's do one thing. Um, I think that some of you might have completed the exercise. Yes, Eric. So, um, good mm -hmm. question. He asks, what happens? So, only 76, yeah. 76 users and the server is down. What happens if 1,500 users across the country has access to this? Okay, two things on that. First of all, uh, we are um, touching the server from the back end. So, we're making some changes on that side. One of the things of Android is Android is meant to be offline. So this is less likely to happen. Now we are having 76 administrators. So I would not call that users. And the second thing is that the server, this server we have created, it has some limited memory. 
that we're going to expand now during the break. But um, it's not common to have 75, 76 people administrators accessing the server at the same time. So one of the things you can do, and this is following the recommendations, you should put your memory according to your so memory and CPU, so your server resources according to your load. Here, um, we underestimate it, so big apologies for that. And we'll fix it right now in the break, so don't worry. But this is something that happens. So another thing that should, you should plan is like, maybe you need to get a um, server or service provider that can expand or shrink your resources according to your um, time or your, your workload. So if you're having a big campaign, maybe you want to increase the memory during that campaign because you're having 1500 users. Maybe later on that campaign is over, you have only 100 users accessing to perform some computational statistics, you can reduce it. Okay, the server is back. But uh, Eric, thanks for the question. We are going to be covering a bit of this as well during the, the Going Mobile session on Thursday. This is a fantastic example of what happens when you underestimate your traffic in the server. <laughs> So how are we doing with the exercises? Yeah. What, if, what, if we put, hmm. what if we put in Slack? Um, how is it going? And if you have finished, like put a check or a thumbs up. If you're still working, do not put anything. Just to make a quick sound nature on, yes. on how is it going. How is it going? I'm, I'm doing that now. Yeah, so please, everyone in the Slack channel, you... Android Implementers Digital Academy. I reply to Mrs. Marta with a reaction like check or thumbs up. That means that you are fine. You have finished the exercise kind of. Hold on, hold on. Here, hold on. here, here, okay, please. Okay. In my message, answer to my message. I'm going to put the first one. So you just have to click on the small thumbs up below the, the text. Yay! Wow, great. Coming. <laughs> so we need, yeah, okay. Okay, please, guys, uh, uh, click on the. Thank you for sharing a message as well. But please uh, click on the. Click here on on my message. I'm gonna share Slack now. On the screen here, in this little one. This is the this is a public channel, so all of you have access to this already. If you're finished, please click here. Yes, very good, very good. Thank you. We are 77 people, so we are still missing some. This is helping us identify the ones that still need help. We want to help all of you. So please, if you are still not uh, capable of clicking the thumbs up because you have any kind of issue, share it as well. I suggest we would get to define what it means by finishing. Sure, finishing means that you have done what is on slide 12. You change the password, that's especially important for you, but for the exercise, you assign your user to the, your mobile user to the role that uh, Jaime has explained, the mobile role, user role. You assign your user to the org unit that we gave you in the Excel file for capture. You verify that your search org units are for the whole country. You add your user to the user group COVID-19. This is all for the user in the user app. And then in the program, you assign the program to the COVID-19 data capture user group for capturing data. And then you can play with the searchable and display in list attributes in the configuration screen. So if you have done all this, then you can tell us that you finished. Okay, thank you, Deepika. Can you please add the reaction here? In the in the where I sent the question. Thank you, thank you. 
<clears throat> Thank you, Kiara. You finished as well. Kiara, Vivian, please, please react. Here, so I, I don't know if you're seeing my screen. Hmm. Yes, Jaime, sorry. No, I, I was going to say that please um, make sure you react to Marta's post with a thumbs up or something, because I guess that when we have, um, yeah, it's okay. Don't worry, guys. If you are not sure you have finished the exercise, we're going to verify in the next session. Yes, but no I would say that as long as we have, or as soon as we have a lot of participants that have finished, we will start with the second session and then we will make a break at 12 30. As I said it. Uh, we have Viniam Bin Casa. I can't see the user app. Please make sure you logged in with the admin user, not with the mobile user. The admin user is the one for the server. We are going to verify your account. Okay, some people also are having issues and they're writing me that they cannot see their program. That could be the case because someone has changed or you made a mistake, don't worry, in terms of making it hidden for everyone. So if that happens, please write to Marta or me or Jose or just tag us there and I will take her. I just did for one of the programs. So if you cannot see it, let us know and we are gonna make it visible again so you can continue the exercise. Biniam, we are checking your user. Did you change your password? Hopefully, yes. No, yes. Okay. So, do, do, do. what we need to see is I logged in. Is is number thirty, Jose? Three zero. Will you take care of that, Marta, or I do it? The number 10, I'm checking. Yeah, guys, if your program is gone, it's probably you have changed the permissions or someone else. I mean, and this, again, eh, we're not supposed to have 75 administrators on the same server, but probably you have hidden it for the administrators. So what Marta is doing now is what probably has happened. No, 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 we'll make it the public. So the first one, yeah. Yeah, again. But, uh, here? Yeah, yeah, like this. Again, this is, not supposed to be the ideal situation where you have 76 people messing with the server at the same time. Yeah. So it might be the case that someone has made a mistake. Uh, you would expect to have one, two, three, four admins maybe. So this is, I mean, there's nothing we can do. We cannot prepare 75 servers. Uh, so please be gentle with the other students or participants and only modify your program. So for, for um, we have uh, got a question here. It's right to have the program assigned to other units apart from mine. It's, it's, uh, it's important that it's only on your org unit for capture. We have assigned you one org unit. And this, if you add it, for instance, in this example shared by Barnabas, the org unit, the program is assigned to 1,162 org units. Synchronizing this Android app, it's going to be very slow and also not secure in terms of data. 
access. So that's why we have given you one uh, or unit per user, which is the first column or column F, sorry, not the first, column F on uh, the file and your program should be assigned to that or unit only for capture. Jose, the server is a bit uh, down again, but Eric needs help with his program. Someone probably touched it. Yes, I was trying to fix it, but I cannot. Uh, I yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it is restarting again. Uh, yeah, so it will be back in 15 seconds. This is how the being uh, running in the facilitator's room from table to table, helping everyone. Now it's like this, Jaime. It's about getting notifications in Slack. I, I miss uh, running. Okay, um, so we are supposed to have this session until 12.30. So I suggest we take the break now. So we go ahead 15 minutes. So we are back at 12.30. We're gonna take those 15 minutes to get a big mug of coffee and to upgrade the server according to what we need. So let's take a break. I'm gonna update the agenda right now. Uh, maybe we can present it. So you see there that you need to be back in 15 minutes, okay? So 12.30, please be back. Hopefully the server will be up and running with increased capacity. Doing that, Jaime. <laughs> Live. Ah, perfect, thanks. Oh, so how do, how do I do this? Uh, don't say sharing for me because I cannot have both things at the same time. Sorry about that. But well, by the end of the session, you should know the differences between the Android download sites and the versions we have. You should have, in case you don't have it, although it was um, written in the Android Academy session, uh, site, you will have the training app installed in your Android devices because you're gonna be doing exercises with it and you will have to submit a screenshots to prove that you have done the exercises so we can evaluate. You should see the program on the device, the program you have just set up and you will register a TEI. This is the first exercise that comes for your evaluation. So I think you were explained already on Friday how this is gonna work. But whenever you, you are requested with exercises, you will have to take screenshots and upload them in the Android Academy site so we can evaluate them afterwards. I think you were given already time deadlines and things like this. If not, we will come back to you afterwards, either Alice, Grant, or Martin. So don't worry. It's just for you to know that this exercise is being evaluated. Marta, can you go to the next slide, please? Okay, so some of you have already been asking, hey, where do I download it? Some people reply, get it from the Google Play. Another one said no. Okay, it's important to know that the application can be installed from several sources and that for this training, you are not supposed to use the one from Google Play. The main reason is that the one in Google Play, it's meant to be in production. 
So it's the one you could install in your implementations, but it has some limitations. And these limitations are removed in the one we produce, which is called training. The training app, we do not put in the Google Play, but you can download it from GitHub. We're gonna explain to you now, don't worry. But just for you to know that every time we release a version, there are three versions that are released, or let's call it subversions. The first one is production. And production, you can find it in Google Play or in GitHub. In GitHub, it's called DHIS2 version 2.3 or 3 whenever we reach, whatever. We create a second one, which is called no SMS. And this one, it's an application that uh, removes the SMS modules. I think actually includes, I'm gonna check afterwards with this, but the thing is that we cannot upload this one to the, to the Google Play because there are some limitations on how Google or what Google imposes. We're working on that so we can put everything on the Google Play or that this version could merge with the previous one. And then we have the training one, which is the one that we put in Google in, in GitHub and we advise you to use for training or for demos or for testing. The reason is that this application, this version allows you to take screenshots. That is something you cannot do in the production because of security things. We will talk in the security session. But a lot of people complain, hey, I cannot take a screenshot with my phone. You cannot in your, if you're using the production. Again, privacy issues. We're following um, a framework that suggests or encourages to do this. So we're following it to the, to the letter. So in case you want to take a screenshot, you should use the training one. Okay. So you can find them in Google Play, in GitHub, these three versions, and in your own store. This is something we're going to be explaining in the session going mobile. So don't worry about it now. But what you should do now is, so next slide, please. You have to download the application. So in order to download, you can go there, that link that is been written there on the left side of the slide, or if you have a camera in your phone, I think most of you will have it. If you have a QR reader application, when you click there, you are gonna be taken to GitHub, actually to that link. So please make sure you download a 2.3 training application. And when you download it and you click, well, you will download it. And when you open it, so Marta is showing you what will be open in your phone. So that's the DHIS2 training app that you should click on it. It's gonna get downloaded on your device. It might take a bit long, depending where you are, your internet connectivity. And then once it's downloaded, you're gonna EB ask about this. It's gonna say for your security reasons, it can change a bit the message, but basically it's gonna tell you, you cannot install. You will need to go to settings and enable the installation from unknown sources. I think it's cool. So once you install it, you will have it in your phone. Yeah, please go to the next one. And you will be able to, well, do the other side of the exercise we explained before that you have set it your mobile user to be using the device. But one of the things we find quite useful that you should know is that if once the application is installed, if you go to settings app DHIS2 training, you will see your application installed. And there, there's some things that they are quite useful when you do troubleshooting. And we have decided to include this slide here because sometimes some people are having issues. So yes, for you to know that from this screen, in case your application is buggy or you cannot do stuff or it doesn't connect, you could delete, you could set how much storage is being used and you could clear the data. Be careful because if you do this, you're gonna clear, you're gonna destroy what you have put in the device that is not seen. We will cover a bit more, but this is something that is useful for you to know that this is one of the ways to check if the application, which is the version that is running, to force stopping so you can relaunch it and to check the storage and clear it. Yeah, yeah, Marta, go on this, please. Okay, so once you have downloaded the application, if you open it, this is what you will be seeing. It's gonna show you a bit where Marta was showing in the demo session. But basically here, you need to put the, um, 
the server URL that you can either type it or put it the QR code. Someone in the channel already um, did this. So thank you very much for that person. But basically, if you take your application, you click on the QR little icon there, your camera will pop up. And if you point here, you will be taken to that URL so you can complete it. And then you are supposed to put your username and password. Please make sure that here you're using your mobile user because this is what we were explaining before. You have been assigned an administrator user that we're only going to be using for the server side. And you have been assigned a mobile user that is going to be using in the Android device. I think some of you have been connected already with the mobile user to the server. Not a big deal, but in the admin, depending on what you have done, you might unload a lot of data. So it's not the goal of this. So make sure you connect here with the mobile user. Again, your mobile user is going to be AC from Academy in capital letters, mobile, and the number you have been assigned, 027, for example. So once you log in, what you should see is Marta, please. Yeah, thank you very much. So this is what we have been seeing before. Here we have been doing tests with the 001 program. That's the reason it's reserved to us. But here you will be able to see some programs, ideally only your program. So, sorry. So the first three programs are gonna be shown there because we're gonna be using them afterwards. Um, you will see the aggregate is there that uh, Rebecca was explaining. Like, couple of hours ago, I think. Uh, and here, you will be only able to see if it's been set up properly and nobody has given you access to their programs. You should see your student 027, 030, whatever you have been assigned. And here, it's what we were explaining. Once you click inside that program, you will be taken to the dashboard. In this case, we do not have any TI yet included. But if you see here, we have a search form uh, which should match what you have set up in the server side. So if in the server side you have set, you have checked the sex as an option for the search, as you can see here, my last option is sex. So here it's shown. What we're going to ask you to compare is that, OK, yes, it's true. What I have put in the server is what I see here. And afterwards, if you insert a TEI, you will see that the amount or the number of attributes that you have been included in the display will be shown in the TI um, entry box. You will see that later. Sorry, in the, in, down here in the, in the right side. Marta, can you go to next? An important thing to know is that every time you make a change in the server, it is not going to be automatically reflect on your Android device. And this we will cover a bit more in another session on day four. How are, what are the implications on going mobile? But at the moment, just for you to know that if you go to the settings, uh, you have several options. So if you go upper left um, icon, this hamburger menu, these three lines, there you have several things. One of the options is settings. And there you have sync configuration. And there you can put the sync input. I think it's uh, one day, one week, and manual. But you can always sync configuration now. Whenever you do this, what you're triggering is you're telling your Android phone or tablet or device to get the information that is on the server and pull it from the server to put it in your Android device. This means that, for example, the, the initial sync, it, include, it will include this the first time you connect to the server. But if you make modifications, you need to come here so you reflect them, so you see them on the device. So whenever you make changes, make sure you go here and you see that the changes have been applied. Yeah. So um, we're not going to go through everything that you can do to the application. You saw many things in the mini demo. We're going to be covering many things during the, uh, the whole week. But what we would like you to know to do now is playing a little bit with the Android app. So I think it's, can you go next, Marta? I think it's, it's done. Yeah. So this is what you need to do now. So please 
make sure you download the application, you install it. And what we're gonna ask you is to submit three screenshots. In the Academy site, you will log in today. You will see the, session, the sessions for day one, and there is one entry for exercises. There, you need to submit three screenshots that you can take with the phone in case you're using an emulator, an emulator. Ideally, you should be using a device, but some people will not have it, doesn't matter. Make sure you have the application installed in your device, virtual or physical, whatever. You take a screenshot and you submit. The first one is a screenshot that shows that the search screen, so you will show the form. If you're having an application, um, it's anyway, I will show during the, during the question. But if it's um, a tablet device or a device with a big screen, it will be on the left. In most of the devices will be in the upper side of the screen. Uh, a TI dashboard of a research. So we want you to sync a TI. So we want you to create a TI. You will be asked for some mandatory fields according to what you have put in the previous step, in the previous session. And you need to make sure you sync the TI. So you know how to do this or not. Uh, track it entity instance, sorry. Someone asked what is a TEI? So it's a track it entity instance. Uh, when I say TEI for this program, uh, this is something that's covered in tracker academies, but basically TEI is gonna be in this case, person, okay? Patients or contacts, we can think about a human being, a person, okay? And then when you register a person, you will be able to go through the different stages that we saw two sessions before. So there are four stages plus enrollment. So we just want you to explore a little bit this and take a screenshot at any stage. You can take a screenshot, lab requests, lab results, uh, outcome, whatever. You take a screenshot, a screenshot and you submit it. We have included here as extra points, uh, we're not going to create, but would be nice if you show us that you know how to go to the settings in your Android device and show us the screen what display, which displays the version of the application you're using and the storage and things like this. So now it's your turn. Feel free to start working. Um, we're going to be available on Slack for whatever question you might have or whatever problem. So Jaime, we, we have a question from Abdul Rahman. Um, he opened the GitHub play, GitHub place, uh, but uh, could not locate the specific training app. So I, I didn't know change before the screen because you were speaking. But uh, this is the this is the website that Jaime shared. This is the release of the Android app, and then down here is this APK. Hoping that's fine. Uh, we also have, I'm receiving questions of uh, people saying, saying when they log in, they see a lot of um, programs because some people have configured the access of the program to many or units. So um, that was part of the previous uh, session and part of the previous exercise. I'm going to open one program now just to show how it should be. So when you open the program and you go to access, your program should only be assigned to one or unit, the one we have given to you. Only one or unit. We will review this if we have time later tonight to make sure once we have evaluated the exercises, we, may, we will try to clean it so that you see only your program. But just for you to know, if you send us your home screen and you see more programs than you should. We know this is not something that you did wrong. It's something that someone else did wrong configuring the program. So it's it's okay. Don't worry about that. But this is part of the exercise. Your program should be assigned to one or unit only. Is this correct, Jaime? Yes. Exactly, yes. In principle, you should only see your, well, the three public programs that's the one you have assigned because your user has been assigned to that organization unit and the program has been assigned to that organization unit. So there's a match between those two. 
So now you should have time to, to, to perform the exercise. Uh, again, some of you probably have already done it because you had already the application installed as it was requested in the, in the welcoming message. Not a big deal, you have time now. Um, as you have seen the agenda, uh, I don't know if, if you realize, but we are having really short sessions. Basically, it's a bit of theory than the exercise. Um, we have said it many times, but again, we're gonna say it again. Every day, the first hour, not today because there was nothing to, to be explaining, but every day we are gonna have one hour before we start the official sessions and one hour after where several uh, facilitators from the Android team are gonna be here to support you. So don't worry, don't stress. We know we're not giving you enough time to finish most of the exercises, but the thing is we have a very limited amount of time. Um, we have decided that, okay, questions probably we will take the at the end because we cannot do it now during the, the exercise. So, but don't worry, we're gonna be here for you. If, if you feel everything is going too fast, breathe, relax, come back to the sessions in the morning or in the afternoon, and we're gonna be helping you there uh, as much as we can on one-on-one. -on -one. It's difficult because it's a big number of participants, but we're gonna be able to, we will be taking care of you, don't worry. So, so for instance, um, right now we are here until one. So share if you have any issues, uh, share it in the share it on Slack. And uh, for those that have finished, that's fine. You can make take your screenshots, make your submission. But for those who haven't, we are gonna stay here one more hour after we finish. So we finish the official sessions in ten minutes. Uh, correct me if wrong, Jaime, but we are going to stay here and two more facilitators will join just to be available for all of you to make sure that at the end of the day today you can um, uh, submit mm -hmm. your exercise. If not, if it's too late for you, as Jaime said, tomorrow 9 a.m. I'm just repeating, but just to make sure the message gets you. So I, I am displaying the app right now. This is not what you see. Mm -hmm. This is the DHIS2 COVID demo server. But I want to tell you that, um, yeah, thank you. When Jaime says the TEI search screen, a dashboard of the TEI search screen, that means that you open the program and this is your TEI search screen. This is the one that we want to see with the configuration that you have made for your searchable attributes. Now the TI dashboard is this one, this one. And it says of a registered and synced TI. So let's make sure the tracked entity instance that you are showing is synced. Like this one of mine is not synced. I have to sync it and if it's not synced, it's not going to be in the server, so we will not be able to see it and evaluate. Now it's synced. So one tracked entity instance that is synced, which means no sync icon here. So this is the, the screen that we want to see. And then entry form of any of the stages. So just open one and send, send us a screenshot of this screen, no matter which section you have open. So these are the three screenshots and then the extra um, the storage as Jaime explained before. Uh, some people are asking in Slack, yes, you need to make the screenshots of the Android application. Yes. So if you have not downloaded the training app and the application you have is the one from Google Play, you're not gonna be able to take screenshots. If you don't want to go through the application, even though we really encourage you, Take the updated experiences with another phone, but it's going to be a bit um, complicated for you every time you have to submit an exercise to take another phone, take a screenshot. There's no reason for you not being using the uh, training application, except if you tell us that you have a device and you cannot install applications because you don't have rights, then use whatever you have been given in case you have, for example, the, the production one. But the idea is that you take screenshots with your own phone on the application and you submit these ones. So our, our suggestion would be take the screenshots, then um, it depends on how do you, which software you use on your phone, et cetera. But the simplest would be take the screenshots, 
send them to yourself with your Gmail account or anything, or connect your phone to your device, to your laptop with a cable and just access and take the screenshots, whatever is easier for you. Then open a Google Doc, paste your images and save as PDF and upload, for instance. We assume you can, or you are, uh, if, if you have problems with this part, we can also support. We have uh, we have been having questions about or people that have been blocking. Uh, you are blocking your own access. So this happens sometimes with the super users if you don't have the all authority. Uh, so one super user without all authority can restrict its own permissions on the server and then block him or herself out, outside of managing whatever metadata. So for this reason, first, try not to do that. But if you do that, usually uh, it's recommended to have a super, super user account that you don't usually work. Even your admins should have one super user account. And you can have another one that belongs to, that is not the one that you use. This is a general recommendation. It's one that you keep for these kind of things. If you make a, a, these kind of mistakes, if you have a super, super user that is not the one you work with, you can unblock yourself. We have been unblocking people today, like three or four, I think. Removing public, no, don't remove the public access because it will make impossible. The well, we, we, yeah, yeah. I, 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 ah, Jaime, you replay to this already. Yeah, thank you. We can see it, but ideally, yeah. Hey guys, um, most of you are asking the same questions. You're asking for the link. You're asking for which application to download. I don't know if you have connected to the Academy site, but there you have the slides that we're presenting. It's really useful if you have the slides next to you because in the slides, we can, we can find the links and the instructions that are giving you. For us, it's a bit complicated to go in uh, because we have millions of messages and we need to go back through the slides. We can put them on demand. Maybe we're going to learn from the experience and we will put the links in every session in the channel. But make sure you have access to the slides because when we're not here, you will need them because there you have the links and you have the instructions. So in order to download the application, you need to go to the GitHub that I'm going to paste here. Well, Marta, if you have it, uh, well, I can do it. Yes. But I'm going to... Oh. In the admin channel? Yeah, can, can you put it? Yeah, so... Yeah. Um, yes, so that's the, the, that's the application you need to download. Uh, if you don't have a Slack in your phone, I mean, maybe you can put only the releases, Marta. Yeah. And another thing, sorry, but I, I'm getting a lot of questions, like a lot of students are writing to me in private. If there is a question that you think concerns several people, please put in the channel, because if not, I'm replying the same question over and over again. So please make sure you put it uh, on the general channel. Uh, Jaime, Alice, we have Patrick still not being able to have an account. Um, let me check. Patrick, yeah. can you can you pin me on, on Slack, please? I have too many. You, yeah, I'm uh, here, Jaime. We have a conversation. Um, in regards with the online platform, he has an account. I think uh, what we should try, Jaime, is to maybe avoid private started messages, uh, probably go to the channel because that is where we all um, follow. I'm also getting many, that's why. Uh, mm.
We have a problem from Bridget assigning the user role. Mm -hmm. uh, you were not supposed to have to assign the user role. The user roles was explained before have already been assigned to your users. So you need to assign the organization unit, but not the user role. The user role, because it entitles more security um, uh, privileges, we have taken care of this for you. So Sorry, that was my bad your case. admin user has been given super user and your mobile user has been given the role facility tracker. So there's nothing else you need to do in terms of roles. Hi, uh, the debate Jaime was answering your message about not being able to create a TI. So your your program in sharing settings, your program uh, should be shared with the um, with the COVID nineteen capture user group with uh, can view and create data permission. Otherwise, you may see it and not be able to create data if it was, for instance, only can view. So it means that in your program, in sharing settings, here, we should add the COVID-19 data capture for capture and view. Okay, uh, so it's one o'clock. Uh, this session, this session is over. Uh, no worries if you have not finished. And uh, now we're gonna stay one hour for questions and answers. So we're gonna be here to support you. We're gonna have the support of two more uh, people from the Android team. So we're gonna be more people. Please make sure you write on Slack. We'll be giving you support as much as we can in this hour. But for those of you who need to leave because it's late, because you have to go back to work, whatever, we'll be here tomorrow at well, one hour before. Yeah. So tomorrow we start at nine. Again, sorry, it's our time zone. So also time nine from nine to ten, we're gonna be having a questions and answer session again. So the same thing we're gonna be doing now. 
we will be available for you tomorrow morning. But the official first session starts at 10. Please be on time. Most of you today were a bit late. And that made us start five minutes later. And then we had to catch up with other sessions. Please make sure you're here at 10 because we'll start. And if you feel that you want to come for support or you want to ask questions, be here at 9. Uh, thank you now. very much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for all those that uh, attended today. Uh, see you tomorrow. And for the rest, we're going to be here for one more hour.